Our sermon text for today is recorded in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18-25, through 25, printed on page 7 of your bulletin. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is God's word. If someone cuts me off in traffic, I would dot, dot, dot. If someone calls me a bad name, I would. If I get bad customer service, I would. If someone mistreats me, I would. How would you finish those sentences? If someone cuts you off in traffic, what are you going to do? You're going to honk? You're going to shake your fists? You're going to say some words that you probably shouldn't say in this room. If you get bad customer service, let's say it's a slow waiter, what do you do? Do you take away the tip? Do you give a one-star review on Yelp? Do you ask to speak to the manager? If someone calls you a bad name, are you calling them a bad name in return? If someone spreads a rumor about you, do you confront them about them? Do you say you're dead to me? Do you fight back? What if someone mistreats you? Maybe it's in your home, at school, at work. What do you do? What do you do when these hardships, mistreatments, injustices come up in this world? And that might be a strange thing to think about on Good Shepherd Sunday. Because we just sang so many hymns about how wonderful Jesus our Good Shepherd is. I've heard some people say before that this is their favorite Sunday in the church here, talking about how Jesus is the good shepherd. We said Psalm 23. At the end of the service, we get to sing, I am Jesus' little lamb. It's beautiful. And even though we like to think about ourselves as sheep walking through green pastures, but we have to admit that our lives as sheep following Jesus are not just sheep walking through green pastures in this world. Right? Because we live in a sinful world, and because of that, the Bible is very open that there will be vicious wolves that are out there. There will be hardships, pain, suffering. As Psalm 23 said, we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When we're called to follow Jesus, our good shepherd, God doesn't just wrap your life in bubble wrap and make everything super easy and protect you from every single thing that is out there. Instead, the Bible is very clear that we will go through hardships, pain, mistreatments, sufferings. So how do we as suffering sheep follow the good shepherd? What we see in 1 Peter, the book of the Bible we've been studying the last few weeks, uh, the book of 1 Peter, it's written to people who are suffering. You have the early Christian church form after Jesus died and came back to life, and right away they started facing persecutions and hardship. And what Peter writes, what God writes to suffering Christians is that the only way you can endure this is by keeping your eyes on the Good Shepherd. Let me read to you the opening verses again. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. So the section of the Bible that we're looking at today is written specifically to slaves. And slavery in the Bible, it's a complex issue. I could say a whole bunch of things about it. But this is what I want to say that you need to know, is that uh, God has specific words for people in a hard situation in life. 
This is not God's endorsement of slavery. He's not giving slavery a thumbs up. By the grace of God, we live in a country and a world where there's not slavery like there was uh, back then. But what we see back in the Roman Empire, uh, there was tons of slavery, tons of servants. And depending on which historian you look at, I saw one this last week that said that up to 60% of the population of the Roman Empire at one point were slaves. Can you imagine that? More than half the people were slaves or servants at one point, uh, depending on what statistic you use. But what does that show? It shows that there are a lot of people not in control of their life, going through pain and hardship. And what God does is he acknowledges them. If you look at a lot of the secular literature at the time, there are all sorts of books and things written to masters of households. This is how you manage your households. But just about nowhere do you find encouragement, words of advice for slaves. These were the overlooked people. But they weren't overlooked to God. God saw them. God noticed them. And what we can take away from that is that no matter where you fall on the economic ladder, God knows you and he watches over you. If you have lots of money, great. I'm glad you're here. Uh, If you don't have lots of money, if you're down here, great. I'm glad you're here. God cares for you no matter what type of situation in life you are in. And here we have a situation of slaves and masters. And I know I'm not talking to anyone who is in slavery here, but I think we can all admit, right, that there are situations in this life where suffering and pain comes that we're not in control of. You might not be a slave at your job, but I've heard of all sorts of people who are in some type of career and it gets really hard and for a time you hate it and you can't quit your job and you're stuck in that situation. So what do you do? There are other types of situations in life where you're stuck in your family and it's difficult and it's hard and you're dealing with someone harsh and you can't just pick a brand new family. In this sinful world, There will be suffering and mistreatment and injustice that so often we're just not in control of, similar to the slaves and masters found in this section. So what's the advice? For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, This is commendable before God. So there's two different types of suffering here. The first one, the commendable one talking about, is if you're not in control of the situation and you're suffering and you're bearing up under it, you are commendable before God. You are in good company. You know why? Because as followers of Jesus, we follow Jesus. And what happened to Jesus? He suffered. He died on the cross. So as followers of Jesus, when we suffer in his name, we are doing a gracious thing before the Lord. We are doing something commendable before the Lord, something that God laid out for us. But we also understand that there are times in our lives where we suffer simply because we have thick skulls and we lead to our own suffering. (laughs) And in those types of situations, don't go wagging your finger at God and saying, God, why would you put me in this situation? So if you are a bank robber, and you rob a bank, and you go to jail, don't get mad at God and say, God, why would you put me in this situation? If you have a test and you don't study for that test, and then the next day you take the test and you fail, don't say, God, how could you let me fail this test? Sometimes we get put in bad situations where we suffer simply because of our own sin. And in those situations, what do we do? Like what God tells us to do. We repent for our sins when we cause pain in our own life. So there's pain in this life that we cause just because we are sinful people. And there's pain in this world simply because we live in a sinful world. And in those situations, we are told to bear up under it, just like Jesus did. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. You were called for this. As Christians being called, this is probably... I don't know, our least favorite thing that we're called to, right? Because there's so many beautiful things when we talk about our calling as Christians. We are called from darkness to light. We are called from spiritual death to spiritual life. And we're also called to suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ. Not the most fun part of our calling. 
But as followers of Jesus, that's what we do. We follow his example. We follow in his footsteps. And since I'm in Minnesota still right now, I feel like I gotta talk about snow at least one more time, right? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so this last winter, I went sledding with my family quite a few times. And uh, we went sledding, and you know what the best part about sledding is? Going down the hill. You know what the worst part of sledding is? Going up the hill, right. Um, and so I would bring Ava, she's four, and we'd go down the hill, and then there'd be some big deep snow at the bottom, and how would we get back up the hills? I would often walk first, use my big boots, make some big footsteps, and what would she do? She'd use her little boots and step in my big footprints, right? She's following in my footsteps. And as Christians, that what we, that's what we do as we follow Jesus. Jesus went through the ultimate suffering and pain in this world. He died on the cross. He bore the sins of the entire world. So when the going gets tough for us, what do we do? We follow in Jesus' footsteps, following his example. So, if someone cuts me off in traffic, if someone calls me a bad name, if I get a bad customer service, if someone mistreats me, how would the Bible fill in this blank? I would endure it. When I'm cut off in traffic, I don't make a big deal about it, I just, I just endure it. If someone calls me a bad name, I would endure it. Like how Jesus endured it. If I get bad customer service, I, I, I endure it, I bear up under it. If someone mistreats me in any type of way in this world, what do you do? You endure it. Just like how Jesus did. So how's that going for you? Are you following in Jesus' example when you bear the injustices of this world? Do you know what our sinful nature likes to do? Get rid of that phrase, endure it, and replace it with the phrase, get revenge. If someone cuts me off, I'm going to cut them off. If someone gives me a bad name, I'm giving them a bad name. If someone gives me bad customer service, I'm talking to the manager, I'm going to try and get them fired. Someone mistreats me, I mistreat them. Someone disrespects me, I disrespect them. Someone hits me, I hit them. That's what our sinful nature wants to do. Get revenge. Get revenge, take the action, the vengeance into our own hands, and fight back. Jesus calls us to turn the other cheek. Jesus calls us to forgive others. But so often, we don't walk in Jesus' footsteps. So often, like sheep, we love to wander away and walk away from our good shepherd. Do you see how dangerous that is? When instead of following Jesus' footsteps, we follow our own path and try and seek vengeance and try and not bear up under it, but instead follow our own path. So what do we do? How do we do this? Well, once again, we look at our good shepherd when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. When Jesus was insulted, he did not insult back. And what I like about this is that it's Peter who's writing this. Remember Peter, the loud mouth, bold leader disciple, who was always getting in trouble for the things that he said. So do you know what Jesus left an impression on him about? About how when Jesus was insulted, he kept his mouth shut. Something that Peter clearly struggled with. But that's what Jesus did when he faced the cross. He was insulted, he suffered, he bore the agony, not fighting back even though he clearly could. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd, the overseer of your souls. And what we learn about our good shepherd is that he's a good shepherd who lays down his life 
for the sheep. By his wounds we are healed. Jesus is the good shepherd who became the sacrificial lamb. He's the one that was wounded for us. We are sheep who love to wander, but Jesus died to bring us into his flock. Jesus not only is our imitation, yes, we try and follow in his footsteps, but he's also our substitute, the one who died in our place. He is a good shepherd unlike any other, the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And because of that, we have that assurance that we are part of his flock. No matter what we've done, no matter how wrongly we've suffered, no matter what type of vengeance we've tried to seek after, we know that we are part of Jesus' flock and that we have green pastures waiting for us. And because of that, because we know this, because we know who our good shepherd is, we can say this. I endure mistreatment because my good shepherd was mistreated for me. How can you bear up? How can you endure it? Whether it is something big, like being cut off, or something small, like being cut off in traffic, or something big, like some type of childhood trauma or pain or something terrible, how do you bear up under it? How do you endure it? Well, you see how Jesus was mistreated for you. The only way how we can endure mistreatment and suffering in this world is knowing that Jesus did it first for you. Are there times in your life where you feel like you are surrounded by vicious wolves? Are there times in this life where you feel like you are suffering? Well, look at Jesus. See how he was surrounded by vicious wolves. See how he allowed people to rip the flesh off his back. See what Jesus did for you. And when you see that Jesus was mistreated for you in the ultimate way, that gives us the motivation, the strength, the assurance of forgiveness to continue to go forward. That no matter what you are facing, we keep our eyes on the good shepherd who went through it all for you. And that reminds me of a conversation I had with a girl named Jayla. Uh, back in the day, I had a job at a Christian after-school care program and uh, uh, I was talking with Jayla, we were, we were shooting pool. And while we were shooting pool, she, I was asking her about her day, and she told me about some fight that happened at her school. Two boys that were just really going at it. And uh, Jayla told me, she said, if somebody ever hits me, I'm gonna hit them right back. If someone disrespects me, I'm gonna disrespect them back, so people know not to mess with me. And I said something along the lines of, Jayla, as Christians, we don't do that. She's like, well, why not? I said, because when Jesus was insulted, he didn't insult back. When Jesus had people put nails in his hands, he didn't fire back at them. Instead, he forgave them. She was taken back a little bit, and she said, why did Jesus do that? And the only answer I could give is because he loves us. Because of his love. Why was Jesus mistreated for us? out of love. Why did Jesus endure under suffering? Because of love. Why did Jesus go through all of that? Because of his love for you. And when we know we have a good shepherd like that, that gives us the motivation to follow him. We know that we have green pastures waiting for us in heaven. So no matter what happens in this world, we follow him, keeping our eyes on the good shepherd. We do this all in his name.